Praise the Lord and welcome to Bridges to the Messiah with Pastor Joseph here at ABN Al Aramiya. Today we're going to look at uh, Surah 2, verse 106 in the Quran. In our program, we look at verses in the Quran which, uh, though we do not believe that the Quran is inspired by God, they are verses that we ask Muslims to think about uh, as a possible bridge or a door for their minds to consider the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ as, as, as contained in the New Testament in our Bible. And so today, as we look at Surah 2, verse 106, we're going to be looking at this idea of abrogation. In the Quran, Surah 2, Surah, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 106, None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Knowest thou not that Allah hath power over all things? And then again, a corollary verse in the Quran, uh, Surah 13, verse 39. Allah abrogates and confirms what He pleases. With Him is the master copy of the book. It's interesting because what is abrogate? Uh, for our listeners and viewers, we may have some difficulty, of course, especially if, if your English is not that good, there's an English translation. But the idea of abrogation is the idea of nullifying or making void certain previous scriptures, whether it's in the Quran, whether it's in the Bible, wherever it may be. Abrogation means nullifying, making void, no longer valid previous verses. Okay, and so in the Quran it states clearly that Allah Allah abrogates or causes to be forgotten certain things that He reveals. Well, I thought the revelations of Allah cannot be changed. I thought the revelations of Allah are pure and special and sent down. Nazila min lo al azim, the sent down from this wonderful board, this great tablet, eternal tablet in heaven. And yet we find that Allah abrogates what He pleases and He confirms what He pleases. With him is the master copy of the book, or the Um al Khattab, uh, Surah 13, verse 39. Very interesting because we find that this passage, uh, if we look at the Hadith and the uh, Sirat Rasulullah, whether it's Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Kathir, other Muslim sources, we find that perhaps these uh, ideas came into play because we find many, many contradictions in the Quran. Now, it's very interesting because. In the Bible, in Christianity, we do not believe that there are true contradictions in the Bible. Now, I know Muslims will bring up this and that and the other thing, but our belief is that there are no true contradictions in our Bible. In the Quran, it's very clear that it's filled with contradictions. How many days did it take to create the heavens and the earth? Is Muhammad a sinner? Is he not a sinner? So many things. Uh, should you be friends with Christians and Jews or should you not take friends of Christians and Jews? So many things. Should you uh, not come to prayers drunk or should you not drink at all? So many things seemingly contradict in the Quran. And so we have this idea that abrogation is right, that it is okay to, for Allah to wipe out and change certain passages. Now, on that note, I want to show you the weakness of the view of Islam of Allah's revelation. In Surah 22, verse 52, Surah Al-Hajj, it says, Never, never did we send a messenger or a prophet before you, but when he framed a desire, Satan threw some vanity or falsehood into his desire. But Allah will cancel anything that Satan throws in, and Allah will confirm his signs, for Allah is full of, of knowledge and wisdom. So the Quran says that all prophets had actually in their revelation something from Satan. Now this is interesting for Muslims who say that, that prophets never sinned. It's so interesting and it's unfortunate because in the Bible, of course, we don't believe that Jesus ever said anything inspired of Satan. We don't believe that uh, Jeremiah or Isaiah or Ezekiel ever said something of Satan. No true prophet of God bringing prophecy will bring that from Satan. But Muhammad did. And that is why we have these verses. What did Muhammad bring? If you look at Surah Al-Najm, Surah 53 in the Quran, you know, of course, if you've studied the Hadith, if you have studied Islam, and you have studied the Sirat Rasulullah, that there are these verses that Salman Rushdie talked about, the Satanic verses. These verses where Muhammad allowed for intercession from Lat, Manat, and Al-Uzza. 
And so what we find is the historian, the Muslim, Muslim historian, Atabari, says this for the uh, motive of the satanic verses. Talking about Muhammad, this Muslim historian says, With his love for the tribes and his eagerness for their welfare, it would have delighted him if some of the difficulties which they made for him could have been smoothed out. And he debated with himself and fervently desired such an outcome. Then Tabari records the verses from Surah 53, which encourages the Meccans to receive intercession from their main three goddesses. He writes, Then God revealed, Surah 53, Originally in the Quran, you say the Quran has never been changed. Originally in the Quran, Surah 53, verse 1 through 3 said this, You have, uh, by the star, when it sets, see Allah is swearing by the star, this shouldn't be. Nevertheless, Allah is swearing by the star, by the star when it sets, Your comrade Muhammad does not err, nor is he deceived, nor does he speak of his own desire. And then the words came, Have you thought about Allah, uh, Ulza, uh, Manat, the third and the other? And then Satan cast on his tongue, because of his inner debates and what he desired to bring upon his people, the words, These are the high-flying cranes. Verily, their intercession is accepted with approval. Now, this last verse is not found in the Quran today, but it was replaced with another verse. And that another verse that has been replaced, it says, Then God canceled what Satan had thus cast and established his verses by telling him that he was like other prophets and messengers, and he revealed something else that you have in the Quran today. So the point here is this. In Islam, Allah changes his mind. Allah changes his revelations. As a matter of fact, Muhammad, when he came and uh, made what he said were revelations from Allah, later on he changes that and he says, hey, by the way, actually Satan calls me to say that. Well, if Satan calls Muhammad to say the satanic verses, what other verses in the Quran might be satanic? You need to think about that, folks, and think about this. Jesus is the Lord. He is the Alpha and the Omega. That is, He is the Aleph, right? He is the Aleph and the Yeh. He is the A to the Z. He never changes. The Lord God says, I am the Lord. I change not. Uh, Jesus says, we find that uh, He says, not one jot or tittle of the Word of God will ever change. Nothing will change until all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Let's look at that passage before the end of our time together. We find in, in Matthew chapter 24 uh, and verse 35, it says in the Bible, Heaven and earth, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But Muhammad's words passed away, especially those words that supposedly came from Satan. And Allah changes cancels, nullifies, and replaces whatever he pleases. What kind of Allah is this? Maybe the Quran one day he will nullify, make void, change. Maybe what you believe, maybe many of the verses that you believe are actually verses from Satan. In the Bible we don't have this problem. In Christianity we don't have this problem. Jesus' words are true. Jesus now says, I am the way. That was our first program. Jesus also says, I am the truth. Not what I say is true, but I am the truth. Every word he speaks is true because God is true. Not like Allah in Surah 8 verse 30, Khair al makarena the greatest of deceivers. No, no, we can trust our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because He is, the Son is the truth. The Spirit is the Spirit of the truth. And the Father Himself said, I am God, I change not, I cannot lie. There are things that God cannot do technically, and one of them, our God of the Bible, cannot lie. In the Quran, Allah is lying all the time. As a matter of fact, He's the best liar. He is the greatest of all deceivers. Khair al makarena We find that passage that I mentioned earlier, Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. By no means pass away. Praise God. His words will by no means pass away. Everything that He says will remain until all is fulfilled. He says, not one jot, not one tittle, the smallest strokes in Hebrew writing, none of it will pass away till all be fulfilled. So here's your choice, Muslims. You can continue to follow Allah and the Quran. Allah is a deceiver. Muhammad himself was deceived. Muhammad brought satanic verses. Muhammad brought verses of shirk and idolatry. Or, and you never know. Other verses in the Quran might have been inspired by Satan according to Islam. 
or you can follow the Bible. You can follow Jesus Christ. You can follow the way, the truth, and the life. You can follow the Bible, which is true, and the true path, and the only way to know the truth and to have the truth in your heart, the truth of salvation by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. He alone can assure you salvation. Come to Jesus Christ today. This has been Bridges to the Messiah with Pastor Joseph here at ABN. Check us out on the web, www.abnsat.com. God bless you until next time.